Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. I've encountered a lot of people this week on Zoom, of course, and if there's one characteristic amongst many of the people I've talked to, it's a certain sense of weariness. Weariness about the pandemic, weariness about homeschooling, weariness about teaching homeschoolers, weariness of working in a time when so many ill people need to be cared for, weariness and the isolation. Well, you know, it goes on and on, not to mention the tumultuous political events and environment we find ourselves in in these times. People are weary and wondering when it's going to end. And that's why it's such a gift this weekend to both hear the story that we hear from Jesus in the gospel and to celebrate the life and work of Martin Luther King Jr. The people who came to Jesus down by the river where John was baptizing were weary. They were weary of being under occupation. They were weary of the tumultuous nature of their own society at the time. And so when they come down to the river and Jesus or John the Baptist points up and says, there's the one, they immediately go after Jesus. And Jesus turns and sees them and he sees the the longing of their heart for something different, for something new. And he simply says, come and see. Come and see, I will show you the way. And so the disciples follow along and they come and see. And what do they see in Jesus? I want to focus on two things that they see. One thing they see is the sustaining power, God's sustaining power that Jesus offers them as they come and follow. They hear Jesus in conversations, and Jesus talks about the living water springing up to eternal life, that refreshing water of new life. Jesus talks about being the bread of life, feeding the deepest hungers, not only of body, but of soul. They even see Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, bringing death from life. And they hear his promise that he will be that kind of sustaining power in the midst of their lives. On this Martin Luther King weekend, we need to remember the context in in which the events we remember happened. 250 years of enslavement. 250 years of enslavement. 100 years of Jim Crow and segregation of the worst kind. And even since then, prejudice and barriers to breaking out of a cycle of racism and injustice. Years and years of being afraid to go out for a walk at night in your neighborhood. These people, we are reminded, were sustained through those centuries of struggle. When they had to be so weary by the power and the spirit of God in Christ. In their community, in their singing, in grounding themselves in the promise of Jesus' power to get them through, they were sustained. And when we remember that, how much easier for Jesus to sustain us in the midst of the turbulence of our time. Just 
as Jesus sustains people in the hardest of circumstances, Jesus can sustain you and me as well. But if we just focus on sustenance, then we're missing the other part of the equation. And that other part is courage. Jesus did not come into the world just to make us feel better. Jesus comes into the world to save it, to transform it. And so that those who come and see Jesus, those disciples who follow, will not only see the power of Jesus to sustain, but they will see the power of courage to bring God's presence into broken and chaotic places, to bring new life to those by being present in a courageous and transforming way. And on this Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, we remember greatly his courage and the courage of those who raised him up, and the courage of those who followed him. It's an inspirational courage of people who dared to come into the chaos and transform it with love. Today at 1045, our congregation will be invited into a conversation with Martin Luther King Jr., looking at his letter from the Birmingham jail. Just a little bit of background, Birmingham, one of the most segregated cities in the South at the time, was under peaceful, nonviolent siege of a boycott until some of these unjust ways would be changed. And into that boycott comes Martin Luther King Jr. to to march, to raise raise the visibility of the boycott. And when he comes to town, there's an op-ed in the paper. The op-ed is written by white clergy people, Christian and Jewish, encouraging Martin to to go slow, to, to not push too hard. These leaders had come down too heavily on the idea that God could sustain these oppressed people, this oppressed community, that God could sustain them through just a little bit longer oppression. But what those leaders didn't have was the important corollary, courage. The courage to encounter the injustice and chaos of the world with love. They were fearful of more chaos, but they couldn't see that they needed to move into that chaos so that the world might be transformed in a little way in love. And that's what we celebrate this weekend. That's what the disciples will come to see when they follow Jesus, that sustaining power and the courage to enter into the world with love so that it may be transformed. And what a difference it makes for you and me who find ourselves in our own chaotic time. What a difference it makes to claim that courage, to not let this time make us victims, but to be both sustained and people in the world, as people have been in the world for 2,000 years, committed to courageously change the world with love. That's why many of us in our church are in little study groups, thinking about how to confront the plague of racism. That's why people are going out on Martin Luther King Day to work with people from many different faiths, many courageous people from different faiths. That's why so many people in this world are working for for change, even in the midst of 
pandemic or maybe especially in the midst of what we're going through. So that's my invitation to you. Certainly rest in the sustaining power of Christ to get us through difficult and chaotic, chaotic times. But also let this be a time that calls forth in you the courage to act, the courage to be in the chaos, trusting in the power of God's Spirit, not only to sustain, but to transform. Amen.